Hello everybody from Japan's coldest large city. I'm in Asahikawa up north in Hokkaido. And I'm going to be eating and introducing the best ramen here. What else am I going to be doing? Asahikawa ramen is one of the big three famous Hokkaido ramen styles. It's soy sauce based, but it's lardy and hearty. And that's to deal with the bitterly cold temperatures here. Let's go. Asahikawa ramen starting now. Welcome or welcome back to 5am ramen. This channel is your dedicated gateway to the wonderful world of ramen in Japan. I'm your ramen loving host Frank and MSG might just be my middle name. This is the sixth video in a Hokkaido ramen series. Hokkaido is Japan's frozen northernmost island and they love their ramen so much up here that they refer to Hokkaido as a ramen kingdom. We've already visited two Hokkaido cities for delicious ramen. Hakodate was all about shio or salt seasoned ramen. We then went on to Sapporo, home to piping hot miso ramen, but also home to a great variety of other ramen styles. In this video, we're zeroing in on bowls 12, 13, and 14 in this series. And this is all in a new city, Asahikawa. Asahikawa is Hokkaido's second largest city and technically Japan's coldest large city. What better way to stay warm than by eating ramen? Our first ramen shop for the day is Tenkin. And Tenkin has been around since 1952. The soup is shoyu seasoned, often the case in Asahikawa. It is also made up of pork bones and is heartier than other bowls we'll be seeing in Asahikawa. Furthermore, there's a generous amount of pork lard on top. When people think of Asahikawa ramen, this is often what comes to mind a heat trapping layer of pork lard. Let's get to me on the ground for a recap of Tenkin. My first bowl of Asahikawa ramen and it hit the spot. These bowls are designed for this kind of weather and it's so simple. There's a classic simplicity to it all and that makes sense since Tenkin has a history going back to 1952. Even though this location is a little snazzier newer, that recipe remains the same. It's a more aggressive shoyu ramen. The soy sauce is bold, salty, you also get some sweetness, and that lard just gives it a heavier body, much like when I was working in finance. But that lard also gives it a delicious flavor. You know, in some ways, lard, pork back fat, maybe this is a ramen shop's cheat sheet. You toss it in, of course it's gonna give the soup more flavor but it also serves the purpose of keeping the bowl hot. Substantial amount of noodles, not too thin, not too thick, nice and wavy. Otherwise, simplicity again with negi chashu pork. That was a tougher, more old school style and nice chewy memma. Great introduction to this style. I'm now walking over to Aoba, which is probably the most famous Asahikawa ramen restaurant. It's literally right around the corner from Tenkin. Aoba is synonymous with Asahikawa ramen, with a history going all the way back to 1947. Their ramen soup is a little different from Tenkin's, consisting of chicken bones and dried fish, not pork bones. The fish flavors are particularly noticeable. More on this historical ramen shop and this bowl now. So, Asahikawa ramen shop number two, the oldest one around since 1947, Aoba. You've got a similar style bow, but some differences. This was lighter. It was much lighter and cleaner. I feel like at Tenkin, it was a messier, meatier, more in your face soup. Here it was lighter and the soy sauce seasoning was bold, but not as bold and also on the sweeter side. And as it was lighter, you could taste more of that fish in the soup. Nothing super intense fish-wise, but with that lighter base, those fish came out to play more. I should have taken a photo with everyone at the end. I was talking to them and I'm told that if you're not Japanese, they take an interest in you. They're just curious. It was crazy seeing all of them there in the same place. The second generation owner wrote the receipt for me and his son, the third generation owner, was in the kitchen making the soup. Family run, family vibes, doesn't get better than that. Noodle wise, quite similar, frizzy, a little bit thick. Although I feel like they were a little bit less wheaty here, more water in them. 
Otherwise, the same expected things. We've got a lot of negi. Chashu pork was softer here though. And also menma. Great bowl, a piece of Asahikawa ramen history, and a place you definitely have to visit if you're in Asahikawa. I'm sure you'll be greeted in a friendly way by the people there too. And I only regret not taking a photo with the whole family there as I was taking photos of the signatures on the wall, the history. To change things up, I'm now walking to Santoka. Santoka, many of you, at least stateside, might know about them. They have quite a few branches in the states. They were one of the first ramen groups to set up a franchise system. Anyways, a different style of ramen, a shio or salt seasoned ramen with pork bones. Not your typical Asahikawa ramen, but they are very much part of the Asahikawa ramen landscape because this is where they're based. I'm about to check out their headquarters. I actually covered Santoka's headquarters in full detail in a standalone video. Feel free to check that video out too. Okay, Santoka. Kind of a curveball here in Asahikawa because they don't do Asahikawa style shoyu ramen. But hats off to them for carving out their little empire starting here in Asahikawa. So Santoka's ramen, for those who aren't aware, is salt seasoned with a rich but not too rich and thick pork bone base. And it was one of those things when I was in there, I was like, is it necessary for me to visit their flagship or their headquarters? Because when you've become a brand or a larger company, as you scale, the ramen kind of tastes the same from place to place, as it should. It's about quality control. And that being said, in the Santoka headquarters, it's a nice interior ramen restaurant. It's not like visiting the headquarters or flagship of some old ramen shop that's been around for years. Even though Santoka, of course, has been around for years, but this is a newer, snazzier interior. And the ramen, it, it did, Tastes similar, of course, to other Santoka bowls I've had, at least in Tokyo. But I will say it was better presented. The toppings look nicer, and maybe that's something they pay more attention to at this flagship shop. In terms of flavor, it was Santoka ramen. It was tasty, and I would say maybe the flagship shop was a bit better. Either that's because it's in my head and I was at the flagship shop, or it actually tastes a little bit better. So again, I was kind of wondering, Santoka, do I need to visit the headquarters. I don't regret my decision, of course. It's one of those things where you can say, I visited, cross it off the list. Not bragging rights so much as, as a ramen collector, just wanted to say you visited the headquarters, you ate the ramen at the headquarters, regardless how big of a ramen brand they've become. And seeing the ume plum there in the middle, the naruto, just brings back fond memories. I'm just debating like what to do because tomorrow I'm back in Sapporo and I'm wondering if I can squeeze in another bowl here in Asaikawa. But I will see you in the morning, still here in Asaikawa, regardless. Tune in to the next episode to find out what I do the following morning. Thanks for watching. I'm just walking around and it's so much quieter compared to Sapporo where I just was. And there's a good amount of snow, but nothing like Sapporo where you're just surrounded by walls of snow. It's kind of cute. There's this little layer on the ground. In Sapporo, it's like you're walking through an ice maze everywhere you go. Temperature wise, about the same, about minus three right now. So cold, but not as cold as it can get here.